Hi Michael, have you tried Permajet's new gloss metallic? Is it any good? What would you recommend it for? Hey everybody, so you're probably aware by now that Permajet have released a new paper. It is the titanium gloss metallic paper. Um, it was going to be showcased at the photography show in Birmingham, which was obviously cancelled due to current events. Um, but since I've got a lot of questions by email, texts, at events, uh, in person, at workshops that I've done, at one or two training sessions that I was at, um, obviously all before the, the, um, the uh, current world events got out of control and we're not doing any you know, mass gatherings or groups or events anymore. But some of the most, the, the, the questions people have been asking me are, obviously like I said in the intro, have you tried Permajet's new gloss metallic? Hi Michael, nice tutorial vid on printing. Quick question, is the new PJ titanium gloss any good? Hi Michael, would you recommend the new titanium gloss paper? Another question is what kind of images would you recommend titanium gloss for? Thanks in advance. Um, okay, so the answer to those questions are yes, 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 and for lots of different images. So thank you for tuning in and see you next time. Okay, you probably want a little more. So, all right, let's take a look at it. I managed to, I, I did get some sheets of it from Permajet um, before it was launched and around the time of the official release of it and I managed to do some printing of my own. I did some prints at an Irish Photographic Federation event in Carlow, um, which was the National Photographer of the Year final, so there were lots of photographers there and to be honest that was my first time using the paper and the first time you know, printing on it. I had used Titanium Luster in the past, which is a really nice paper. Um, so I'll be able to give you an idea of how it compares uh, to Titanium Luster as well, okay? Now, first off, okay, describe the paper. When you pick it up, it feels quite, um, you know, limber and flexible. It's not like a rigid paper. It's not going to kink as easily, I would say, you know? It's, it's quite flexible, so um, it would be, you know, the kind of paper that is not going to be too rigid to make nice even rolls that won't flatten out. It's, it's, it's quite a, a flexible paper. Um, these are some A3 sheets I have here, and I'll show you some prints in a sec. Now, so it's 300 GSM, but it doesn't feel very heavy. You know, if you pick up something like Museum Heritage 310, which is only t 10, 3 S uh, 10 GSM, uh, 10 grams per square meter heavier, um, which isn't a lot, that paper feels heavier than this. So this doesn't feel that heavy. So obviously, um, you know, that's an illusion because it's so compact and flexible. The surface on it, when you see it unprinted, is very glossy. It's got a liquid look to it, you know? Um, I've, I've described some papers like Smooth, uh, Smooth Pearl. In other videos, I've described that as having a kind of an almost vintage varnish look. Um, this also has quite a varnish look, but it's more like a glossy lacquer almost look to it, but it is not in any way distracting. So I want to be very careful about how I describe it. It just has a lovely, um, you know, gloss sheen over the entire image that can enhance the depth. Now, it is a gloss paper and people know uh, my thoughts on gloss papers. I don't have an issue with gloss papers. A good gloss paper is a good gloss paper. You know, a good paper is a good paper. But in certain situations, gloss papers can be distracting. All right, so every paper has its pros and its cons. It's like with matte paper, you know, for portfolio reviews up really close. Clients often don't appreciate a matte paper because they're not used to it. But behind glass in an exhibition, in a frame, matte paper is amazing, or even not behind glass, anywhere where you don't want reflections or things like that. Mounted prints, flush mount prints, matte paper looks keeps all of its contrast in rooms that would have unpredictable or uncontrolled lighting, you know? So, but that's neither here nor there. This paper is a gloss paper but 
for people who've heard me mention, you know, my own preferences before, I don't want people to think immediately that's a negative thing. It is not. And in this case, to be fair, um, quite the contrary. So, colour reproduction. Permajet's profiles are always spot on. One of the reasons I've used Permajet since I first discovered Permajet back around, I don't know, sometime in the mid-2000s. And I've stuck with them ever since because there is no hassle with printing and getting accurate representations on Permajet papers. It was the first um, selection of papers I found where the manufacturer or the, the supplier was giving generic profiles that were actually usable. Not only actually usable, but I've, I've, I've tested custom profiles, I've got custom profiles so that I can explain to other people how to get them if they need to. Um, and I've tried them to see what difference it would make, but to be fair, if I'm gonna be totally honest, Permajet's color uh, reproduction, because the, the, the papers they use, the coatings they use, are all fantastic, but the profiles that they supply are amazing, and it's no, uh, it's not any different with titanium luster and titanium gloss. So, the colour reproduction is fantastic. Um, you know, if you have an accurately calibrated monitor and you use the uh, Permajet generic profiles for these papers, what you see is what you will get. You will get what you expect, okay? I'm 100%, 100% confident. And I did my first prints under pressure at an event, literally just before I went to talk about paper types and give a, uh, you know, a quick, informal demo on what works on different papers and how different papers affect images and one of the papers I was printing on right before the start of the seminar was titanium gloss and that was my first time printing on it and I have to say as usual as always Permajet have you know delivered so contrast amazing and I would go so far as to say because it is a gloss paper, it can give that heightened illusion of, of a magazine-y type contrast that we all loved, you know, coming up and when we were getting into photography. It's got the rich, deep, um, you know, density and reproductions of, of, you know, that you would often associate with high quality darkroom prints, for example, um, in the black and white monochrome kind of printing yeah, arena where you'd look, you know, you'd be looking for rich blacks, etc. But... It's got that kind of glossy look, which reminds me is slightly reminiscent of Cibachrome without being overly glossy. Some of the Cibachromes to me were, you know, apart from the fact that we were looking for hypersaturation when we were getting Cibachromes done, usually getting them done from like Fuji Velvia slide film and, and, and things like that, or Kodachromes. And we were looking for that vibrant, contrasty pop. And then we were getting it done on a hyper glossy Cibachrome as well. Um, you know, this is a lot more, uh, I would like to say tasteful, but I don't want to sound like I'm knocking Cibachromes because I love them. But it is a very, very, very nice, perfectly balanced, well done uh, gloss. And it's perfectly balanced between, um, you know, having enough sheen and still maintaining the, 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 you know, the contrast and not having too much washout. Okay, so... Obviously, the other things are a bit of a given with a paper at this level, okay? You've got really good sharpness, really good detail reproduction. I keep looking at my <laughs> screen here, to make, watching it focusing on me rather than actually looking at the lens. But it's got really good detail reproduction, really sharp. Um, it's up there with any paper I've, I've, I've used. Now, I'm going to go so far as to say it is my new favorite gloss paper, okay? I like some of the... I love the fiber-based papers, and I like some of the other semi-gloss and gloss kind of type papers as well. But this is my new favorite gloss paper because to me, any image that would work on a gloss paper just comes to life on this with some exception, okay? There are some caveats to that. So let's take a look at some, some pictures and we'll see how it works, okay? Here's an image, okay? That I would normally never up to now have printed. I mean, I've tested it, but I've never output it deliberately or showed it, taken its talks on gloss paper or satin paper or a semi-gloss paper or anything like that because it's got some very subtle tones in the highlights, but, you know, it's also got lots of rich shadows and, you know, for, for people to appreciate that, it's nice when you're showing an image for people not to have reflections on the, on, on the surface, okay? So if there are lights in a room, if you're visiting a university or a camera club or an association, you don't want to see nothing but glare and reflections of spotlights on, on the print so people 
you want people to be able to see the prints. This is printed on Museum Heritage 310, which is my all-time favorite paper, especially for taking to talks. I've described that in another video, we won't go into detail now. But this is my go-to paper for images like this, okay? However, as a test, and just to show the differences between papers, and I've never loved that image on any gloss papers, I printed it on the titanium gloss, and it's incredible. It works really, really, really well. In this area here, where you have a lot of highlights, okay, and brighter areas in the smoke from the smoke machine, and, and you know, lots of subtle detail, okay? The detail is all preserved, but I have enough detail there so that it still works in the gloss paper, but there are enough rich mid-tones contrasted against shadows for this to glow. Because what happens on a metallic paper is that, you know, the light obviously reflecting on the paper, that the areas where the ink is thickest, you get less, you know, light reflecting back from the paper. You get less of the paper brightness seen, obviously, okay? So, but what that means is when you get to areas where the ink gets thinner and thinner, so your mid-tones, your upper mid-tones, and anywhere where the paper is starting to come through, it starts to create a really nice, you know, um, uh, I want to say luminous, but it's the wrong word, but let's take it in the broadest sense of the term. It takes a really nice, it gives a really nice glow to the colors, okay? So it looks like your, your mid-tones are almost glowing out of, you know, against the shadow areas, okay? Now, it still stays subtle though. My issue with a lot of metallic papers in the past is that that transition can be, even on subtly transitioned shadows in, in, in a well-managed image, in a well-printed image, the transition can be sudden. And a lot of, there have been metallic papers down through the years that would have had the, what I would have described as the tin foil effect or the aluminium foil effect, or if you're American, the aluminum foil effect, okay? Where things were suddenly transitioning into a garish kind of metallic reflection. Not so much with this. It's an incredibly photographic type of metallic paper, okay? Um, stunning, I absolutely love it. Now, where it's most evident then, where you get that glowing effect is on, say, the lit areas of the face here and here, and the, the vibrant colors. Vibrant colors tend to pop and stand out, okay? And then here, this is one of the caveats of using a metallic paper that I wanted to mention. And, you know, it would happen with this and it would happen with luster as well. So just be careful, not every image works on a metallic paper. To me, any, any images where you've got very, very subtle transitions between very bright highlight in, into getting towards white, in a lot of situations at a lot of angles, that transition and those details can be lost. It's not a fault of the paper necessarily, it's more just a suitability thing, okay? But for the vast majority of other images, anywhere where you don't have too much soft transition of, you know, pure highlight and very, very bright mid-tone, white areas, for example, with little bits of detail in them, metallic paper is probably not the easiest paper to appreciate those details on, okay? So, that's this image. And I was absolutely shocked when this image came out, how much I liked it on this paper, okay? So, another image, which I was not surprised I liked on this paper, is this one, okay? This is a more commercial, I'm trying to angle it so you can see it, but I'll, I'll show close-ups of these anyway. This is a more commercial image. Now, this image, um, during the seminar, fell and it, amongst a crowd of people and practically got walked on and <laughs> literally got as much abuse as it could take and was picked back up um, and then put back up on display and there's only one scratch on, on, on the paper. So I've had other prints, um, you know, that would have gone through the same kind of ordeal and would have shown a lot more battle scarring, okay? So yeah, I don't think it's the, it's, it's, it's the most delicate paper in the world. It's quite a hard wearing paper, I would think, okay? From having seen that. And these have been, all of these prints have been abused because people have been wanting to see them. So, but yeah, this one, again, it's another example of where you've got a lot of dark areas and then the mid-tones are glowing out. So when the light hits that, they glow quite a lot. And the same on the skin tones, on the, because it's a commercial image and the product is the hairstyle, etc. the colors on the hair, it gives a really nice pop, a really nice, um, it doesn't change the image, it doesn't change your contrast, it doesn't do any of those things, so it's difficult to appreciate unless you're looking at the print, 
but yeah for this type of image it's i think it's unbeatable and this is why it's my new favorite it's my absolutely favorite new favorite gloss paper on the planet i absolutely love it i didn't love titanium luster as much it's an amazing paper it's a fantastic paper but um, I kind of really wanted that subtle, milky, varnishy kind of sheen over some of the transitions and over some of the glow for some of the more commercial work that I, I was shooting, etc. You know, I think that raises this to a whole other level of, of what it can do for the right kind of image, okay? Titanium Luster, I've seen some amazing prints on Titanium Luster. I've done really good prints on Titanium Luster. It is a fantastic paper. Um, just for me and the work I do, I think the gloss on the metallic surface handles a lot of the mid-tone to highlight transitions a little better um, in my work. So, and by that I mean it just presents them better, it doesn't handle them, it doesn't do anything to them, but just paper is about presentation at the end of the day, okay? Here's another image, and again, if you, when I show you close-ups of this image, you'll see there are dust bunnies and dust spots in this image. Um, you know, anybody who buys prints from me don't get images with dust spots on them, but these are images I pull out of raw files sometimes, you know, out of folders, pull a raw file out, do a quick export edit, and make a print for demo purposes, so I don't spend too much time um, on tidying them up. So, and that was the case with this image as well, okay? Which means, you're basically taking a raw file, doing a fairly quick edit on it, exporting it and printing it under pressure just before you start a seminar. Um, I can only do that because I have experience of using these profiles on all the other range of papers down through the years and never having been let down. So I was very nervous, but still confident enough to, um, to do that literally just before a seminar. And I was blown away by this print as well landscapes especially landscapes with dramatic tona tones in them dramatic tonalities um strong shadows like this one which was taken in a break in a rainstorm um as it was getting into evening and you can see the sun starting to go off down on the right hand side that sunlight along the horizon literally glows the light on the water glows the highlights on the rock literally almost glow okay so I kind of had a feeling this would work on the metallic gloss paper, that type of, that style of paper. Um, but it's only when you see it and you see the way the orange highlights on, on, on the reflections in the sand and, you know, from the sun and things like that, the way, the way those get picked up um, by the light reflecting from the metallic surf surface behind the ink. It blew me away how good it is and how good the paper worked on that image, okay? so. Those are the images I printed on that paper. Just incidentally, by way of comparison, you can see here, this is Museum Heritage 310 again, and you can see why I use this paper when I go traveling and doing shows. No matter which way I angle it, you can see the detail on the image, okay? So that's one of the big deciding factors when you're deciding what kind of paper to print on. Um, and I always advise people that forget about what suits what image first. The first question that people forget is they almost automatically jump into, oh, because I saw an image on matte and I liked it. Oh, I saw an image on gloss and I liked it. Yeah, but the context in which you saw the image was important as well, okay? Um, so where you're going to be viewing the image is the first question. And I won't go into that in too much detail. There is another video, if you have a look on the videos on, on the channel, where you can see where I go through paper choices. But this image, awesome on Museum Heritage 310. But I have to say, for purposes of, you know, making a book of images, like as in, you know, a portfolio, where you would keep your own prints in a snapshot folio, for example. Permajet do fantastic snapshot folios. Um, anybody who keeps portfolios or wants to print images and keep them for, for showing people up close, get a snapshot folio. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, I have two or three of them there. I won't show you now. Maybe another video. But... Yeah, at the right angle, so when people are looking up close and they can control how they view these, that paper is absolutely, absolutely amazing, absolutely stunning. The colours just literally glow, that sky 
without the colors changing at all, as you can see. Okay, it's not changing the colors, but just this, the effect and the perception when you are looking at the print in your hand. It's just amazing. It's amazing. So, yeah. So to answer the questions, <laughs> have I tried it? I sure have. Is it any good? It is. Um, would I recommend it? Absolutely, wholeheartedly. It's my new favorite gloss paper. It's my new favorite gloss paper probably by a mile. Okay? And I already love the other gloss papers that I, that I tend to use. So, um, look, Permajet has an amazing ar array of papers and the profiles, like I said, are fantastic. But this one blew me away from the point of view of gloss. It's actually made me feel a lot more excited about gloss printing again. So, I hope that was useful. I hope you take something from it. Don't be afraid to, um, you know, comment down below. I'd like to hear what you think. Have you tried it? What are your experiences? Subscribe to our channel because there will be a lot more videos like this and a lot more photographic content. Um, especially now that a lot of people are stuck at home and look, I'm gonna do my best and I know Alison will do her best and we will do what we can to put up as much content for people as we can because it's, a, you know, one of, you don't wanna say there's a silver lining, but at the same time, there is maybe an opportunity for people to keep up their learning and their development. And if I can help with that, and if I can do something to help people be, you know, more occupied in a productive way, then I'll do my best with the content, okay? If you do want to support me, etc. obviously we're all, <laughs> everybody is going to be hit at the moment, but if you do want to support what we do and support the channel, go to the website. We'll be putting up a lot of um, print galleries that, so that people can buy prints, limited editions and open editions, etc. And I would be absolutely eternally grateful if anybody likes the stuff enough to purchase a print or two, okay? But look, I will leave it at that. And thanks for watching. And any questions, don't be afraid to give me a shout. And keep safe. Take care.